Hey everybody, it's Christine Bertram. I'm coming to you live from the hive here in snowy, cold, blustery, windy <laughs> Fond du Lac, Wisconsin. Uh, it is six o'clock right on the head and we are gonna be doing none other than the mystery card making night tonight, you guys. Woohoo! thank you in advance to everybody uh, who was willing to adjust their schedules. Uh, we have about eight inches or seven inches or six inches, I don't know, it's like that tall, of snow outside. And I was slated to have my, there it is, it's live, yeah. I was slated to have my celebration hoorah rah class here last night, oh, tonight. Uh, but my mom told me on Sunday morning that we were gonna get, be getting a lot of snow. And so we made the executive decision on Sunday already to switch it around to tonight. And then I had my in-person on wet, a Monday night, which worked out good. So hi, Susie Socks. Hi, Dolores from Wisconsin. Hi, Donna Simmer from Vancouver, Canada. Um, great day, night of, yes, exactly, Dolores. It is a great night or day for stamping, uh, especially when you're kind of like nestled inside because of how much snow you have. Yeah, exactly. I was going to... Um, is it, it's dark now. If we would be live and it would be light, I was going to take the camera off and show you the winter wonderland outside. But I think that uh, maybe that'll happen tomorrow instead. <laughs> Hi, Mary Hartman. Yay. Um, who else do we have here? Hi, Susan McNeilis. And then let's see. You guys, there's so many people already. Hi, Madge Everhart and Kim Barr. Hi, Hilda Nell. Hi, Jean Maxwell from Arizona and Jill Kielblock. Hi, Jennifer Jones and Abigail Saya. Um, Melody Miller's here. Hi, um, Ohio, where we have record highs of 73 today. <laughs> that is crazy, Melody, because we have the like the snowstorm of the season coming through here right now. Hi, Susan Murphy. Hi, Carla Lake from Kentucky. Carla, you were one of the last people I need to get back to. Uh, I kind of was off of my emails over the weekend um, from like Friday night, Saturday, Sunday. You guys, Saturday was a design day for me. I kind of uh, cooped up in my design, my craft room, and I got the ink paper scissors designed, and I got the bee frame design, the honey bee sample, uh, the sampler class. Uh, so today was, the, and then I was kidding up a class yesterday, and today was the day I was going to get back through emails, and I did, except for Carla. You're the one left that I've left to get back to um, regarding the March classes that you want to take. So working on it, Carla. I'll try to get it done tonight or otherwise tomorrow morning. Um, hi, Deb Norman from Icy Iowa. Uh, change of pace from your cruise uh, down in the, the warm climates. Hi, Paula Rice from rainy Indiana. Uh, <laughs> you have a big snowstorm going through. Yeah, we don't have the crazy right now. Uh, it's been snowing lightly all day long, thick, big white flakes. And then tomorrow it's supposed to get really blustery and be blizzard-like conditions. So crazy. Hi, Mary Lemke. She's got six inches in Sioux Falls, South Dakota and more to come overnight. Us too. Yep. Hi, Corinne Bouvia. Um, let's see, did I miss anybody else up above here? You guys are rocking and rolling in here right away. I love it. We're going to be doing mystery card night. Oh my gosh, it just like went. Uh, oh, Corinne had 80s in San Antonio today. Wow. You know, I would like that. That would be awesome. Hi, Pam Gale from Wintry, Wyoming. Hi, Maria Gilbertson. 43 degrees in Maryland. <laughs> oh, you snuck away to see the grandbaby. I love it. Awesome. Hi, Judy Bobo. Um, yeah, you've got a lot of snow up in the upper UP too. I know it. Um, let's all go to Ohio. Yeah, Ohio or Arizona, right? <laughs> or Texas. Hi, Dion Miller. Um, so Dion, you still confuse me. Oh, here you have Dee Dee. In your email, you have Dee Dee, but then you go by Dion. And now I can't remember. It's been a few months since we connected. It's probably been maybe five or six months. And now I'm like, is it supposed to be Dee Dee or is it Dion? <laughs> I know you go by one, but not the other. But I see your names in both locations, and now it's really confused me. Hi, Marsha Kulabert. Uh, hi, Barb Myers from North Dakota. Hi, Jean Terwilliger from Pennsylvania. Uh, you forgot to cut all your pieces. It's okay. You can cut all your pieces as we're jibber-jabbering right now. <laughs> Donna Simmer says to everybody, hit that like button, you guys. Hi, Carmen Sanders. Hi, Donna Grushki. Hi, Trinket Troy from Virginia. Um... We hope we go out, have to go out today, yes. You know, I hope nobody had to go out in any of the snowstorm crazy weather. So it's raining for Hildenel in Lancaster, California. Perfect afternoon for a mystery card night. Awesome. Hi, Sandy Z Dune from snowy Marshfield, Wisconsin. Yes, you're getting everything we got. Hi, um, Karen Wettstein. Hi, Shelby Dixon. Oh, there's Sherry Martin as well and Barbara Rudolph. You guys, wow. Okay, 
So hi, Elaine Reback. We're up to 79 people already. Hi, Pamela Leahy. So you guys, you uh, Pamela says she loves Mystery Car Night. Hi, Linda Hall. Very cool. Hi, Susan Risch and Laura Fromanek. All right. There's Susie Stocks and Jeannie Parker. Wow, you guys. Okay, well, like almost... The gang's all here, it seems like, but I know there's still going to be people rocking and rolling in. I see some new names here. That is so awesome. You guys, we've been doing Mystery Card Night since March. No, not March. May. May of 2020. We took June off because I was never going to do Mystery Card Night again. I, I never had it in my foresight to do a monthly Mystery Card Night. And uh, the, the feedback was so positive. And so starting July of 2020, we haven't missed a Mystery Card Night. So that is so exciting. Yay to us. Uh, so... What is Mystery Card Night? I know there's other demonstrators who do a Mystery Card Night and everybody does it a little bit differently. Uh, mine is where I give you all the measurements for the pieces of paper that you need. And then what we do is we come together tonight and I walk you through how to put the card together um, using your own creative inspiration as you must or want to. And then basically I give you the pieces cut um, well, I tell you what to cut to have a specific layout. And then you use your own stamps, paper, ink, uh, adhesives to put the card together. And I've heard lots of positive feedback from this specific way that I do mystery card night that you guys like it. So that's awesome. Hi, Susan Wormley. Hi, Michelle Quintanilla. Or Quintanilla. Quintanilla? <laughs> I can't wait for the um, captions to try to spell that one out. <laughs> I love it. Hi, Jean M. Hi, Kimberly Cronauer. Hi, Sarah Mitchell and Doral Hoffaker. Hi, Linda Kester. Whew, okay. So just so you guys know, there is no wrong or right way to make your card tonight or whenever you watch it. If you catch the replay, that's awesome as well. Um, this is going to live on. So in case you don't get time to do this, like let's say you get interrupted right now and you don't get back to it, this replay will be available in the YouTube, my YouTube channel for as long as YouTube allows us to have our videos out here. So, um, so that's exciting. Um, again, there's no wrong or right way to make your card. This is for you to feel um, inspiration to make your own card. Um, I am a Stampin' Up! demonstrator for those that don't know that. I do use all Stampin' Up! products in my classes that I teach and when I do different things. Uh, but just know that this is your time to use what you have at home. I don't ever want anybody to go buy something new for this class. I want you to use what you currently have, <laughs> right? Because don't we all buy things and then we don't necessarily use them? And then now here's the perfect excuse. Oh man, I haven't used this before. Let's pull this out and see if we can make this work. So that's what I'd like for you guys to do. Use the things that you currently have. Hi, Christina. Hi, Denise. Hi, Lisa. Hi, Karen. Oh, hi, Becky Schlossnagel. So you guys are doing good. So, oh, Paula Rice says, I'm so glad you do this. Yours are the best mystery car nights. Well, thank you so much. You know how to make a girl blush. I appreciate that, Paula. <laughs> um, so I love for you guys to use what you have at home. Um, We've been very fortunate over the last um, little bit that we don't get the trolls or the spammers that come in, but just know this is a free card making class. You guys don't have to ever pay for it or sign up for anything to do this. You don't even have to tell me that you're doing this class. You just watch and it's all good. But sometimes we get those stupid spammers and trolls that come into our feed here. I just don't ever click on that. What we do is we report them right away and then get them out of the feed so you don't accidentally click on them. It sometimes happens in this class in particular because of how much activity is in this class. Um, oh, thanks, Jeannie Parker. <laughs> and so don't ever click on anything that looks fishy or spammy, okay? Uh, we don't want you to get taken advantage of. Um, the other thing for those that are new, don't stress. Um, we're going to go through a card in less than an hour. You may not finish your card in that hour, but that's okay. You can always finish up the card after we're done or tomorrow or whenever you get around to it. So just know that there is no pressure if you don't keep up to my clues as I go through them. Uh, they are more of just to walk you through it. And after I'm done being live, I hit the end button and then it gets into the replays. And then you guys can always fast forward, uh, pause me, stop me, shut me up, do whatever you need to to get your card done. <laughs> um, and just if you kind of lose track at a certain spot in the video, just kind of pay attention to what minute it's at because then you can always click right back to that minute in the replay and then you're good to go. Um, hi, Mary Schreiber. All right. Anything else? So 
I do love using Stampin' Up! supplies. Um, I sell them. I have been using them for over 20 years. Um, if anybody is looking for a Stampin' Up! demonstrator or looking to take awesome, amazing card making classes, I would love to earn your loyalty and your business uh, and always reach out to me. When I flip the camera down, all my contact information is there. I have a website that I have an events calendar. I also have a way to sign up to get my emails um, and that's on my website. So don't hesitate to reach out if you need help with anything. So. All right, we're up to how many? 103. I actually see 103, Deb, uh, Jeannie and Deb are talking about how many people, I think. Um, 103 people. I think my biggest mystery card night has been 150-ish, 153, something like that, way back um, in that summer of 2020 or even summer of 2021. It was, there was that many people. So, um, but I think people um, are kind of back to the normal activities that they did uh, pre-COVID. And so and now people catch the replay a lot more versus catching the live. But I think my heyday was 153 people live at one time, which was awesome. So um, the other thing too, we talk about pattern paper. I may refer to it as designer series paper because in Stampin' Up! Lingo, it's designer series paper, but it is pattern paper, whatever you wanna call it, it's patterned paper. And you could even make your own pattern paper by stamping all over it to make your own design. Um, this is Julie Hansen's first time. All right, so that's my always my, my question. I love to see if you guys know how to use the emojis. I always like like the thumbs up to be the people who are taking this class right now for the first time. And if you've done this and love it, then give me the heart symbol. And I think there's ways to do the emojis in YouTube. I know Facebook made it so much easier to do those emojis, but um, but yeah. Um, so Julie's new, you guys. Uh, and I'm sure there are other people that this is their first time. Um, if you have questions throughout this live, don't hesitate to type them into the comments. While we're live, we have a great community, um, 110 people out there, and I bet you over 70% of those people have taken this or done Mystery Night with me before, and they could help answer the question, or if I see it, like I generally see the questions, I can also answer it myself um, and help you along. So, um, But we're happy to have everybody um, here for Mystery Card Night. Um, so... Madge. Hi, Madge Everhart. Um, all right. <laughs> I see lots of um, things coming through. I love it. All right. So, um, all right. I think that I covered everything. If there's any advice that people who have done this a time or two or 10 or 20 or 100, be, I don't know about 100, but if you've done it a time or two and you want to put any advice out there for the newbies, you guys are always welcome to write that in the comments. Um, so yeah, um, just a heads up. I do not share my card with you. Okay. I've never done it. During the live, my card gets shared. Hi, Debbie Schultz. My card gets, hi, Deborah Griff Griffith. Uh, my card gets shared later on. So this is weird. We're doing this on a Wednesday night. Normally we do mystery card night on a Monday. It's just normally on a Monday. And then your card entries are due by Wednesday night. Well, I'm gonna have them due by Monday night. So you guys have the whole weekend to work on your cards. Um, hi, Kay McClurk. <laughs> um, hi, Donna Kretschkin. Um, I, I don't know if, I, so sometimes you guys, the names roll through and I think I um, didn't say hi, but if I say hi twice, never fault me. Just say, yeah, I got hi twice. Um, so you guys will have till Monday night to um, submit your card entries to be entered into the drawing. Um, we'll collect your names on Monday night, Tuesday, and then we'll do the drawing probably live during class next week. So next week, uh, doo -doo -doo, next week is the second, you guys, of March. So February is almost done. Oh my goodness. February 28th, I think, is on Tuesday. So we'll pull the names Tuesday, Wednesday-ish, and then we'll do the live drawing on Thursday night. Um, and we'll go through that be with you guys at the end. If you don't know where that is, I walk you through how to do it and how to find it. And then um, it'll be there for you to look at later. So, okay. Um, I have to share you with you guys something. So I thought I was going to fit designing in and a video on Saturday, but you guys, you know, that never happens. Like, I don't know what it is about designing, but having to clean and reorganize at the same time I'm designing. <laughs> like I went up to my craft room and like, oh, I need to do this, this, and this. I want to make this. I want to make this. And then it's like, oh, let's put this away. Oh, let's clean this up. Oh, let's rearrange this. And then before you know it, time has passed and you haven't gotten everything done that you want to get done. Well, that's what happened to me on Saturday. So I had every thought in my head that I'd get all my designing done and then do a showcase video with you guys, but that didn't happen. I still got the designing done, but I didn't finish it till about 6 p.m. <laughs> and by that time, it was time to do some time, some happy time with Tyler. Um, so 
I'm gonna share it with you guys. Give me, indulge me for two minutes. I'm gonna show you some upcoming things that were created for March and early April, just two things. And then we're gonna do mystery card night, clue number one review. So I bet you guys wanna see what I've been up to, right? I think you guys always say yes when I do, um, hi, Corinne Moore. I, you guys always say yes when if you, you, I ask what do you, if you wanna see it or not. Okay, so just a real quick snippet here, you guys. And so, this is for the ink, paper, scissors. Yeah, February did zip by trinket. I definitely agree. This is for Feb, um, March's ink, paper, scissors. It's called Regency Park. There's four cards that come in the kitted up class, right? So you get all the paper, ribbon, embellishments. It's um, You get a goodie bag of the designer paper, a quarter pack, the ribbon, and the embellishments. And you'll get the kits to make these four cards. So this is what I did on Saturday. I had so much fun, you guys. I think during the scavenger hunt, I said that Regency Park is my favorite suite in the catalog. Well, it's so fun working with all the designer paper that I couldn't just stop designing at for these four cards. So for those that sign up to take this class with me, you're gonna get the kit for these four, but the, the PDF tutorial is gonna have two bonus cards in it. Hi, Darlin from Hollywood, Florida. Um, there's not kits for them, but the tutorial is going to have six cards in it. And that's because I used all 12 designer series papers between these six cards. So there's 12 designs in the pack. And so with six cards, each pattern got used once. And so these two cards, you won't get kits for them, but the tutorial will give you the measurements pictures. And so the tutorial will contain six cards. So it's a bonus two bonus cards in your tutorial. Hi, Mary Jane Keeper. So, but aren't they so pretty? Oh my goodness. This Regency Park designer series paper is so, the pages are so complimentary to each other. It was just so much fun mixing and matching this paper that I just couldn't stop at four cards. I had, and this one's a little bit of a fun fold, so that pops up. It's not a crazy fun fold, but it's a different type of fold. I just couldn't stop designing at four cards. I had to be like, yeah, let's make, and that's what happened too. I ended up making six cards for this one. So you guys, this one is going to be a fun one. This is ink, paper, scissors, the end of March. So lots of time to get signed up, but um, yeah, so cool. All right. Then the other thing that I worked on you guys really quick is a sampler. Um, I haven't made a sampler in many years. I got samplered out. Uh, we did probably five or six of them in a two year stretch. And it was like, oh, everybody was like, okay, we got enough frames. We don't need more samplers. Well, <laughs> hi, Carissa Elberts. Um, thank you, everybody. So, in, so it was two weeks ago yesterday. Hi, Deanna Stell. Um, it was two weeks ago yesterday that honey passed away my cute little i should say our tyler's and my cute little adorable girl kitten passed away and we have tigger yet um and it was in the back of my head i wanted to do a new another sampler with the bee products because my team is the bee happy stampers and so i took those two things and i put them together and uh came up with a sampler called in loving memory of honey bee sampler class. And you guys, I do have a date for it. Um, I know because you always want to know when, when stuff is. It's not on my calendar on my website yet, you guys, but it is in my paper book. Um, it's mm, do, 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 April 3rd. And all the details, if you don't get emails from me, you might want to sign up for my emails if you want to hear this kind of information in a written form. Um, the class will be April 3rd via online, 1 o'clock p.m. Central. If you can't make the time, the replay is always there, but are you ready to see the sampler? So again, this is in loving memory of my little honeybee. Um, so I can hang this up in the hive as a little remembrance that my little precious baby isn't here, but I can still have lots of good memories of her. So this is the sampler that I came up with on um, Saturday. So I made this at the same time. And it says, enjoy all the little moments. And um, the frame is optional. Like if you don't need the frame, fine. Um, you can always get, I have 23 frames. Um, they were overflow from a different um, event I did two years ago. And I'm like, I got to do something with the black frames. So I have 23. Once they're gone, they're gone. Um, but I got them right off of Michael's. And so you could always get your own or get them from me, um, whichever. Um, but yeah, this is the In Loving Memory of Honey Bee Sampler class. So very, very cool. So um, it's just um, a little token of my love and appreciation for how this kitten touched my life. Um, so yeah. All right, so I'm gonna set that so it doesn't fall down. So 
<laughs> yes, anybody who wants to take any of the classes, don't hesitate to reach out. Deb said she wants to do the honeybee. Yay, so Jeannie does too. Oh, it's Lisa's first time watching. Yay, thank you so much, Lisa. All right, and then I thought I'd tell you guys too, I am making headways or headwinds. I've been making progress on the, I'm what I'm calling share, create, and inspire card class. It's gonna be like a mystery card night in reverse, 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 where mystery card night, I give you guys the clues and you make the card based off of my clues. Well, for the share a recipe, share a recipe, you guys are gonna share a recipe card with me and a sample card. I'm gonna create a different card based off of this recipe card that you're gonna mail to me or drop off or give to me, however. And then we're going to do a class where I'm using your recipe card to make my own card. And I'm not gonna show your card until the very end, um, but then I can um, take my interpretation of your recipe card and, come, and then show my card and make a card with you guys live, impromptu, on the fly. And then um, you guys um, will be able to make a card based off of this recipe as well. So we came up with this idea last month sometime and I've been stewing on it and, um, um, trying to formulate a plan for how we can make this work. And so I'm happy to announce that by the end of March, we're going to have the first class on the books. Um, I have somebody um, already lined up to give me their first recipe card. And she's going to be working on that in a couple weeks. And then I'll put the, the first class out there. And then I have a sign up sheet via a Google form, you guys, to um, give me a uh, notice that you want a recipe card. And if anybody submits the Google form, like your name, address, all that good stuff, um, I'll send you a recipe card in the mail. And then you can take a little time, fill out the recipe card, send it back to me with a card, and then you may end up having your card chosen. And um, if I'm going to start up once a month, you guys, and if I get too many cards back that I can't accommodate once a month, I'll do an ad hoc one and do it potentially twice a month. Do you guys like the sound of that? Um, Paula says it sounds like a fun time stamping. I think so too. Um, <laughs> uh, hi, Pat Detlefson. Um, So there'll be more details coming on that too. I have the Google sign-up sheet already started, you guys. And um, yeah, so, all right. So you guys got to indulge me. I don't usually spend that much time like jibber-jabbering at the beginning of a mystery card night, but I'm so excited. I haven't seen you guys for a few days and it's time I needed to share some stuff. But you guys got to tell me if you're ready for clue number one. Um, when I start to see the yup, 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 let's go, that's when I know to keep moseying, moseying onto these clues. The first clue we're going to do, what are the dimensions of the recipe card? Small, <laughs> like four by six, I think. Not even that, Donna. Oh, here, I've got my calendar here, or calendar, my, my ruler here. Um, hi, Mitzi Stanley. It's six inches by four. So it's four by six. Oh, you know why I know that? <laughs> um, here. Um, I got, the reason this came up is because I'm doing this club technique class with Rose Coleman in Canada, and I bought this recipe book for me to put in these techniques that we're doing, like she did yesterday, the twisted ribbon technique, and so that last month was rock and roll technique, so I started my, my recipe book full of her techniques that she does her class on, but what came were all these recipe cards, and so... Yup, that's what we decided to do with these recipe cards is to create an ad hoc impromptu um, stamping night. So, all right, I heard let's go, let's go you guys. Okay, so clue number one. All right, so are you ready for clue number one? <laughs> you guys are like, let's get this party started. So much jibber jabber. All right, you guys, um, let's just go through the pieces really quick just to make sure we have everything set for um, all our pieces. All right, so we need here white vanilla, three pieces. And they are, I'm gonna go through these with you guys. All right, we have four inches by two and a half. It's whiter vanilla. Again, if you want um, a neutrally kind of warm card, go with the vanilla. And if you do cool undertones, like do the white or whatever you want. But the WV means um, white vanilla. I reference tall and wide with T and W. So here's one piece for our white. And then you need two pieces that are the same size. And they are two and three eighths by two and three eighths. Okay, so two and three eighths 
by two and three eighths. All right, that's what you have for white, you guys. Okay, so three pieces, it says it right here, three pieces, and this double slash means a break in number of pieces. All right, coordinating cardstock one, two pieces. You need an eight and a half by five and a half, and score and fold it at four and a quarter. All right, so it says score and fold. So score and fold it. So you have your A2 size card ready to go here. All right, but then it says there's another piece. Two and a half by four and a quarter. So this is two and a half by four and a quarter. I did have somebody reach out to me and ask if I made an error, if this really was um, not supposed to be, if like that was supposed to be two and a quarter. I said, nope, my measurements were right. I have uh, what I want to show you with how to, to do your matting on here. So those are your two pieces of cardstock one. Now, you have a cardstock two. Um, if you want to keep it the same color as cardstock one, or if you want it to be a complementary color, whatever you want. Um, it, it, I have mine here purple. Like, you guys, this is my hodgepodge scrap copy paper card. I am not really showing you my card, right? So I use copy paper. For those that are new, I use scratch copy paper. And they're not really a card, okay? So this is my coordinating cardstock two, and it could be the same color as one. Your call if you want it to be or not. I mean, honestly, they're inner, it could be one or two. Um, two and five ace by two and five ace. So you want two pieces. All right, that's this one right here. All right, so that's there. And then you have a coordinating pattern paper one and a two. Well, you guys, I grabbed copy paper. Somebody's um, scavenger hunt here, actually, Dar McCarthy's scavenger hunt that I had um, <laughs> graded. Um, this is my designer series paper. So I tried to make it look like it was decorating. Uh, and just to write the size on here, um, we have a five and a half by one and a five and a half by five and a half. So that's my pattern paper one. And then there's one more pattern paper, a five by three, which I just grabbed an old coupon for my lucky hand. So this is my um, designer paper two. So they kind of complement each other. This is five inches by three inches. You guys, there's a lot of pieces. So we have, let's see if that fits on the screen. Let's do this over here move that here. So lots of pieces, you guys. Then you're going to want to pull in any scraps that you want to use. Like if you want to put a tag on it, you want to die cut, like stamp and die cut or fussy cut anything, you need some scraps. Okay. So these are my scraps. Bring in any ink, markers, colored pencils, sentiments for your, um, some stamps for sentiments and to color ribbon, thread, embellishments, um, adhesive of choice and scissors. So honestly, whatever else you need to make the card. So I think I bought a couple people some time to cut their paper and I'm believing you guys are ready for clue number two. <laughs> so if you are, do that thumbs up thing and let me know. Um, I'm pretty sure that you guys are. So normally I wait to see the thumbs up, but I'm sure that you guys are ready for that. So we are going to go without further ado to clue number two. Okay. So for clue number two. All right. So you got all your pieces in front of you. What you want to do is burnish the edges of the fold on the eight and a half by five and a half with a bone folder. And maybe you've done this already because you are just instinctly into burnishing your folds. So when you just fold it, it has kind of a roll to it. And when you use your bone folder, it just provides for a nice cre crisp crease and it makes it very sleek on the side. So that's what a bone folder is used for is to burnish your edges. Um, we will be using that later, but that was the first part of clue number two. Um, just to remind people, too, that are watching for the first time, there is a little bit of a delay. You guys, I'm at like um, 629, and by the time you see this, it might be 630 or 631, just depending on how delayed you are. Um, so just know that I, I try to take that into account, too. <laughs> so, all right. So that's the first part of clue two. The second part of clue two is to adhere the one inch strip of your pattern paper near the left edge of your card front. Okay, so what does that mean? That means you have your one inch strip. This is my very pretty uh, decorated paper. And it says to adhere it towards the left 
side of the card. Now, how far to the left you're gonna ask? Well, let's look at the next one here. Adhere the three inch piece of pattern paper to, to the middle area of the card front. So I'm gonna kind of share with you what this is going to look like. Um, so you can kind of guess where you wanna put your stuff. So this, if you want it close to the edge here, you can go close. I'll zoom in a little bit so you guys can see. Like if you wanna go there, you can. You wanna go here. Like anywhere in this general vicinity would be perfectly fine. And then this one is gonna overlap it slightly, slightly, slightly on the, like this, it's right-hand side. So the left margin of this one overlaps. So Susan Bellamy finally made it home from church. Yay, I'm so happy you could join. Um, Mary Sykes says no delay. I love it. Okay, so that's what's good about YouTube is sometimes you guys don't even get a delay. So this is generally what this is gonna look like. So um, if you're hesitant about gluing it because you wanna see the rest of the layout, you can wait because this really doesn't take much time to do this step. And I'm only gonna do a little bit of glue. And so I do have it about a good quarter inch from the left-hand side, so I can see my cardstock there. And then this, ha ha ha, we'll put it the right way. This overlaps, and I've got about the same margin on the left and the right, so centered top to bottom. And then there's about the same margin on this side and this side. I kinda like made them equal, like the same amounts here. All right, so if you wanna take that and glue it, you can. I have a little tip. Hi, Carol Alanis with all your happy purple hearts. Um, it, what you can do, if you cut your base here um, a hair shorter or taller, this is where if it's a hair over and you need to trim that little bit off, now is your time. Go ahead and just trim that off. Here's a little tip, like don't leave that little bit hanging there. Get that so it's nice and flush so that you don't have that overhang. Okay, all right. So that, you guys, is what I have for you for clue number two. If you're ready, and as soon as you're ready, do those thumbs ups, give me some love or hearts. Let me know that you've gotten this to this point, the two pieces of pattern paper glued to the card front. I did zoom out, yep. <laughs> so Donna just said a comment. See, that's where the timing comes in, you guys. Donna just said, can you zoom out again? And I already did. So the comment came there, see? I like, The comment was there 15 seconds before I actually did it, so. All right, Susan Murphy is ready, and I see Susan Ray Hendricks is ready. All right, again, if you don't feel comfortable gluing this right now, you can wait and, and see how the rest of the card kind of comes together before um, we move on, or you move on, I should say. All right, I'm getting some thumbs ups. I'm ready to go on to clue number three. All right, we got this. Yes, we do, Mary. Clue number three. All right, stamp a focal image on the two and a half inch wide piece of white vanilla. Now, at this moment, you don't know um, width versus tallness, right? But I am calling out here that this is two and a half inches wide. And um, so th we're gonna talk about this for a little bit, all right? I'm gonna give you a sneak preview of the next clue, even though we're not ready for it. Um, you can kind of guess that this is a mat for this over here. And so, um, just so you know, there is a little mat and ultimately it's gonna go onto your card front right here, right? So it is a vertical card, you guys, it's not a horizontal card, all right? So here's where you guys can use your sole discretion on what you wanna do. I'm telling you, if you want to, to stamp a focal image on this piece of white paper. Um, you could stamp your sentiment right on here. For those that are more basic or simple stampers and you don't like lots of extra added layers, go ahead and put whatever you want to on this piece of paper. But if you wanna add a little layer or a, add a sentiment, that is where your scraps come in, okay? So let's say you want to stamp um, a focal image of, let's say, okay, let's see if I can show you an example. Like here's an example of what you could do. This is, haha, <laughs> sneak peek, you guys. This is let's just stamp card for April. Diane and I just did these. They're hot off the press from yesterday. Here's an example of what you could do. 
if you wanted to stamp, like, I know it's a little bit smaller, but here's a sample. You could stamp your images right onto here, stamp a sentiment at the bottom, and tie your ribbon around it like that, because that's what we have here. Decide how you would like to add a sentiment, strip or die cut. Where would you like to add ribbon, you guys? I'm very big on using ribbon, so I try to incorporate ribbon on almost every card. Now, let's say you want to do something more like this, okay? So I just showed you guys this card here from the Ink Paper Scissors. This is about the same size. Um, hi, Anique. Yes, <laughs> I was just reading your comment. So this is something too you could do where you stamp on here, put your sentiment, put the ribbon around. And But here I'm using some pop-ups. Uh, I stamped those flowers and then popped them up. So that's where scraps could come in handy. So you guys, this is your palette right here. The two and a half inches wide by four inches is your palette. Now, if you really want to change things up and make this card go horizontal, by all means, you can even do that. I said earlier, there's no wrong way to make your card. Um, so if you are feeling inspired to do it horizontal, <laughs> to do it the other way horizontally, you can definitely do that. Um, here's another one. This was the ink, paper, scissors card. If you wanted to put something like this onto this, you could um, find a sentiment that's going vertical, right? Or make it horizontal and put something like this on here. Okay, so I've given you some ideas on how to proceed. Um, here's another sample. Okay, this is another card from Let's Just Stamp for April. Here was about the same size, stamped all over and adding a sentiment and ribbon on a little piece of paper like this. Okay, um, let's see if I got one more here. Um, even something like this could work, you guys. If you have this, this is about the same size, you could get that little turtle on a little stump and put a little sentiment, and that could go on the front. Okay, so this is where your discretion is completely yours on how you wanna proceed. You basically wanna get the front image here to your liking, stamping directly on it, or do you wanna use scraps and go crazy with layers and adding different things to it? Figure out how you can put ribbon on it to make it pretty, all right? Now, I'm going to assume that this step is probably going to take people a little time, and you're not going to quite finish it <laughs> before I'm ready to probably move on to the next clue. Here's another card I want to show you. This was from Valentine's Day Bingo. You could take something like this and incorporate that on the front of the card, um, these uh, little designer series paper hearts and put a little sentiment with some ribbon on it, that could be the front piece of the card, okay? So this is not going to happen in the next like 30 seconds to a minute. You guys might need some time to digest this for the card. Now, that's okay because we're going to work on, we're gonna take a pause. So take a pause from clue number three and we're going to, I'm going to make the executive decision that we're going to go on to clue number four, even if you might not be ready for it, okay? So I, I hopefully have given you lots of ideas on what you can do because that's your card front, right? Figure out that, but let's take a pause and work on putting the rest of the card together, okay? I hope you guys are okay with that. And if you're not, <laughs> better get okay with it. <laughs> All right, clue number four. So let's talk about the rest of the front of the card. All right. So, um, we're, oh man, <laughs> you guys, I wrote these clues last week. Let's see if I finished off the front of the card. I didn't. Okay, so <laughs> uh, here's the rest of your clue that we're going to like put in here. So, um, white vanilla add <laughs> here to um, coordinating cardstock one, two and a half by four and a quarter and then two card front. Okay, I looked front and I'm like, oh man, we didn't even talk. We went straight to the inside. So little A here, and this will be B. Take the wisp or the white vanilla and adhere it to coordinating cardstock, this piece, two and a half by four and a card, and then put it to your card front. Hi, Latokia. But um, the question came up, I mentioned this early on, like, am I missing a quarter inch on this side of here? So I'm not. I really want for this, just to show you guys, I have 
it set up. Let's see if I can show you this. I have it there. Um, a different color would be better. That's not much better. So there's a little notch right here and a notch right there. So when you go to glue this together, when you're going to, when you're done, let's say you've finished doing your Karen Wettstein, if you're listening, I think that this is the step I forgot to write in the PDF tutorial that you caught wrong too. <laughs> so what you want to do is glue these together and you want to make sure your margin is an eighth of an inch on the top, the left, and the right, uh, bottom, top, bottom, and left. Okay, so yes, you do have an eighth of an inch overhanging here, but I intentionally did that because when you put this onto your card front, you're going to, if you look at it, it gets nestled. The purple coordinating cardstock one meets up with the one here, where if you would have put that extra quarter of an inch, it would be hanging all the way to the edge. So when you go to either pop this up with dimensionals or glue it flat, I've got that that edge flush here with the um, the pattern paper underneath here okay so um hi christy warren checking in late have to catch the replay yep you betcha so when you so this impromptu little one clue here is adhere these two pieces together and then you're going to put them onto your card front and you're going to have it so that the card stock meets up with the cardstock here. And I have it centered top to bottom. Now, if you are a big proponent about um, not covering up designer series paper because you, you know, it's underneath here, you could, like, and this is for those that aren't gluing as we go, you could have like used that middle section and taken it out to salvage it, but I don't always do that. So like ultimately my designer paper is peeking out along the edge here. And then I've got the other designer paper here. And so ultimately, this is the layout for you guys for the front of your card. And whatever you decide to put here is your, it's your bag of beans. Um, adding a label strip, like you could put a little label strip on here, whatever you want. So, all right. I hope that that all makes sense so far. And that, that would take care of that little um, impromptu A clue up here. Now, now let's go into the, inside of the cards because you guys look we have these pieces left and you're like what's going on here <laughs> so much stuff left over okay so you should have the outside taken care of so let's move into the inside you have a five and a half by five and a half piece of pattern paper and it can be one-sided or two-sided i guess it doesn't matter i know sometimes you can buy one-sided designer paper or pattern paper that's okay and what you're gonna to wanna to do is fold it in half vertically. So because it's pattern paper, it should be a little thinner. If you choose to wanna to score it first, that's on you. You can score it at two and a quarter and two and a quarter. But I have found that with designer series paper, I can generally take my paper and fold it. So I'm taking it and folding it first is vertically. All right. So. Fold the paper in half vertically. Grab your bone folder. Burnish it. Um, hi, Millie Kendall from Eastern Montana. And then I have here horizontally as well. Okay, so open it back up horizontally. Now I'm going to turn it back vertically, but now I've got it that I've basically scored it in half at two and a quarter and two and a quarter on each on each side oh well, on two sides right or you know it's in half this way and this way okay hopefully that makes sense and now diagonally from both directions okay so we are making a fun fold if you guys haven't figured it out <laughs> and we have to now diagonally fold it in half on each side here so take it one way make sure your corners meet up very nice and then Take your bone folder and burnish it. Okay, so that's one diagonal, but I want it both ways diagonal. So then now take this to ha! Susan Murphy stands correct. And she corrected me, you guys. My math was fuzzy. Fuzzy math. It's not two and a quarter. She corrected me and she is accurate. It is two and three quarters. Half of five and a half is two and three quarters. So if you are scoring this, you guys, it's scored at two and three quarters. 
not two and a quarter. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Susan. Very helpful. Thank you. I appreciate that. <laughs> Didn't want to be wrong on measurements, you guys. Okay, now we're folding it in half um, the other way, diagonally the other way. So take your foam folder and burnish it. All right. So now you can see here, we've got a fold here, a fold here, a fold here, and it goes out this way, that way, and that way. All right. Um, if if you've got all your, you know, now you can see the score lines very nicely on this side, pretty much. You can see all the score lines. All right. Now fold it to make a diamond. And what does that mean? Okay. Really? What does that mean? Like, how do I make a diamond by folding it? Okay. So what you have to do is I'm going to do it from this way. I'm going to pretend, okay, you guys, this is really busy. I get it. I was just trying to denote that this is designer paper. I'm going to do it this way. So you want to make, fold it into a diamond. And how I would do that is these, these two are diamonds. So I'm holding it as a diamond. This needs to fold back like this. And this folds back. Oh man, hang on. This folds back like that. Okay. It's like one of those puppets you did when you were in second grade and like, who's, what boy are you going to marry and how many times you're going to kiss him and how many babies, you know, you're going to have that puppet thing or like that finger thing. <laughs> like that's kind of what it reminds me of. So that's what we've got. Okay. <clears throat> <coughs> did you guys like have a blast to your past from like your childhood? I mean, I know I did that in second grade and we had like five of them and it was like, like that. <laughs> and then like that. And then it was like, you counted like numbers out and then you open it up and you got to see like how many babies you were having. Okay. So this is kind of along the ways of this. So I think I know what you're going to do. Yes, exactly. So I made it into a diamond. Now, how did I do that again? Because I did it really fast, I think. What you want to do is this piece stays flat and fold this one down and fold this one down. And once they're down, that one should go like that. It's called an explosion card, you guys. Yay. So I'm going to, like this thing you could do with me at the moment. So I'm really hopeful you guys have this figured out. So if you could give me the thumbs up when you got this done, I would be happy. Um, a fortune teller. Yay. It's a cookie catcher. <laughs> I don't know what the, I call them, but I still have mine. I went back to my childhood room at my mom and dad's house in the farmhouse. I found a little box of all my trinkets and treasures from all my grade school. And I found mine. <laughs> like, I'm like, oh my goodness. Um, the cookie catchers. Yes. Um, Chris shares the measurements a few days before the event. If you watch the replay, she shares them in the beginning as well. Perfect. Thanks for answering that, Deb. I really appreciate that. All right. So I see Susan Murphy's got her cookie catcher ready to go. <laughs> All right. So is anybody else good? Do I need to open it up and shut it and show you again? Susie's good. Mary's good. Perfect. Jeannie's good. All right. So you guys got your cookie catchers done. I like it. I never called mine a cookie catcher. <laughs> I don't know what I call that thing, um, but I, you guys know what I'm talking about. So we're going to move on to clue number five. All right. So let's flip our still skin down um, and see what we have for five. All right. So we just made our diamond and with the pattern paper one in the shape of the diamond, you're going to take and adhere the back um, diamond to the right inside panel. So grab your card and open it up. And you're gonna put your glue on the back inside panel. So I flipped it. I mean, right now they're a horse a piece, right? I put on the very beginning here, you guys, I did say non-directional pattern. So like then hopefully, because if you have a direction to your pattern, this is, it's gonna be going cr crazy crooked, right? <laughs> so Jeannie Parker says, yes, it's a cookie catcher. Did I say a cookie cutter? <laughs> I might have said cookie cutter. Okay, I, I did mean um, a <laughs> it's a cootie catcher. No, Jeannie Parker. <laughs> Anyways, so you guys, we have fun with this. All right, so it should be non-directional, meaning then you're not going to worry. So I've got glue on the back side, and what you want to do is the peak that's folded, not the open peak, um, the peak that's folded. You want to kind of center. If you need to get the ruler out, you guys, go grab the ruler. Half of five and a half, we learned, is two and three quarters. So you could put a pencil mark there if you wanted. Um, but you're going to just put that right in the middle here, um, centered top to bottom. 
and then to the left margin, right? Okay, so that's the first half here. Now hold the diamond shut and place adhesive on the top diamond. So to me, that is the top diamond. <laughs> well, right, I guess it could be that, Jeannie, because you, know, you were trying to figure out your boyfriends and all your babies and such. Um, shut the card onto the diamond and let the adhesive bond, all right? So you don't want this jammed in here so far that it doesn't shut good. So you can be a hair off. It's like a hair away. Um, so let's shut this and let that adhesive bond to the card. The heat from your fingertips helps it. I definitely would not use mono adhesive tape runner you guys that will not keep this card contained and together for the long haul i definitely would use a, a craft glue i would use tear and tape like this or um stampin up makes some tape runner that's a seal plus which is for like 3d projects i would not use any kind of a sticky tear and tape that doesn't stay stuck um so all right let's see what the next one is all right so when you guys have it glued in the inside, it should open like that. Ha <laughs> ha, so cool. All right, now this is designer series or pattern paper, you guys. So it should be really pretty at the moment, right? Not just white. Hi, Shelby Dixon from Virginia. Uh, Mario was getting coins. Yes, Hildy. Um, yes, you're right. That is my phone that I play music on. And I don't know why it got coins, but it sure did. <laughs> so, all right. So how's that going, guys? That was clue number numero cinco. So does that mean you guys are good? We've got our inside glued in. You guys, this was such an easy, fun, fun fold. <laughs> All right. So you're watching. I hope you forgot you're watching from the Netherlands. Yep, Anik, I didn't forget that you're watching from the Netherlands. I know you're there. All right. So you guys, give me those thumbs up. I'm hoping that you got your innards glued in. Once you do, uh, we're going to work on the rest of the inside of the card. I'm just waiting for my first thumbs up so that you can... Um, let me know that I can move on to number six. I'm waiting very patiently, waiting for my real coins to come in. Um, so you guys, that diamond might be tricky. Just know that once you've folded it um, and uh, burnished it, it should be compliable enough to um, put it how you need it to be, like in the name of, or in the form of a diamond. Um, huh? All right, I'll have a good night, Stacey Burns. All right, so moving on to clue number six see what we got here you guys all right so we've got four pieces left you guys and I will move this in case you guys need my contact information it's here now email website phone number current host code if you need it all right stamp the sentiments and stamp sentiments and a focal image or focal images in coordinating inks on your white vanilla mats okay so yes these two bad boys are your inside white vanilla mats and then, so do whatever you want to. Just hint, hint, hint. Just know they are diamonds in the rough, okay? They are going to be this way. So you definitely want to stamp them like this, not like this, okay? So what does that mean? <laughs> stamp them when they're diamonds. Um, and then you're going to adhere these mats to their cardstock mats. So now that's why I said in the beginning... This could have been the same cardstock color because they don't touch. They have that pattern paper in the middle, but they could have been a complementary color as well. So your call. Um, so Susan Ray Hendricks, redo it. <laughs> Definitely refold it the right way um, and then use this as your sample card. So all it was is it folded in half, horizontal, vertical, and then each diamond. That's really all it was. Okay, so you guys, hint, hint making sure that you stamp your images so that your paper is at a diamond. Okay, diamonds are forever, ever, ever, um, usually. All right, then you're going to adhere that to the purple, or my purple is my cardstock, one or two. And then adhere these mats to the... Um, inside left and right sides so what does that mean <clears throat> they're going to go again if you don't like the way you stamp on your white vanilla it's not the end of the day end of the world don't cry over that just flip over your white paper and restamp but remember we said to stamp diagonally because when you glue these in here you want the same margin of designer paper or pattern paper showing 
Again, I didn't get the memo about writing my numbers on there <laughs> the right way, but um, if you wanna make sure you have your sentiment there, um, then you're good to go. And then a little flower, and then we can make a little sun. All right, put your focal images on however you want. All right, now that, so again, if you fold it like that, little guy needs to get into the habit of going up like that, all right? So when you open it, boom, explosion card in your face, awesome sauce, and then you got your inside all decorated up how, I'm sorry, your outside decorated up all however you want, okay? So again, your discretion on what stamps you wanna use, what sentiments you wanna use, like I have, um, I'll show you, be, uh, you guys, I will actually be sharing a card with you tomorrow night because tomorrow is Celebration Hoorah Raw card class, which is a fun folds class. If you haven't put it together, you guys, there's a card tomorrow night that features this exact layout. And those who took the class with me now know how to put it together. Yay. Okay. So I'm going to mosey on to clue number seven. So are you ready for clue number seven? Clue number seven is my favorite clue. Embellish and Stella to your heart's content. So Stella is a, a girl's best friend. <laughs> it's a glitter brush. And you can just Stella and put a little glitter on. And then embellishing however you want. Um, put whatever you want for embellishments on. Now hopefully you figured out where to put ribbon on the front. But now figure out where you want to embellish. And you guys, you have yourself a fun, fun fold. Yay! Hi Melinda Russell! Yay, I'm glad you caught either the end of this or this mystery card night. <laughs> uh, again, if anybody tuned in halfway through or later on from the beginning, you can definitely go back and watch the replay as soon as we end the video. So what does it mean now? So now you've made your beautiful, awesome, amazing, gorgeous card, and you want to share it because the best thing about making cards is sharing with others, right? Sharing the card, either like give it to somebody or keep it for forever as a sample, put it on your mantle, whatever you want, but um, take a picture of it. Um, what we love in this community is we love inspiring and sharing our ideas with others. Every Sunday we do a share it Sunday and you guys are so amazing about posting your creations that you've been working on and it just helps to inspire others to see different samples and creativity to get your creative juices flowing to use the things that you buy, right? So that's what this mystery night has become all about is sharing your samples because we all start with the same layout, but at the end, everybody's cards look different, um, which is great because it just shows the versatility of how you could just take this layout, keep it in your archives, your arsenal. And then when you're looking for a, oh man, I need to make this kind of a card. Oh man, I just made this or, oh, I made this a year ago, but it's so much fun and easy to do. I need to whip out a card really fast. Um, here's a layout for you. So we want you to share your card. And where do you share your card? Some of you guys know where this is, but sometimes you might not um, if you're newer. Just know that after this class is done, I always schedule an email to go out the day after if I'm on my A game. Um, in that email, it contains a link to this video as well as to where to share the picture um, of your card. So if you have a hard time finding it, instead of reaching out to me right afterwards, just wait till the email comes out and you'll have a link that all you have to do is click on it. Um, what was I gonna say? Um, that is if you get emails from me. So if you don't get emails from me, I challenge you to sign up to get emails from me so that you see these kind of things and then you can get that. So um, Donna takes pictures of all her projects, yay. All right, so let me flip the camera down and I'm gonna share with you guys where you can show, share your picture. Okay, so um, Hildy says she loves the layout, wonderful. I, you wonder what Mize looks like. Hmm, good question, right? <laughs> all right, so I'm gonna show you guys. So we are just gonna tell you guys, we're in YouTube right now right? We are in YouTube live land in Christine's Cards by Christine channel. The, the snafu for somebody that's not on Facebook where this might become an issue, but I have a public Facebook page. I do all of this kind of sharing still in Facebook. I have an amazing community. We have over 4,000 people um, that are in the Cards by Christine Facebook family of my page. And so we go back to Facebook for sharing. All right. So if you don't subscribe or aren't a Facebook person, um, you, I think you can still share. I guess I really don't know. Um, I, somebody would have to tell me um, because my is a public page that anybody can access. So I would think that you could share, but maybe you have to have a profile page to share. I, I, I don't know, but most people are good with sharing in Facebook. So I'm going to go to Facebook now, you guys, and show you where in Facebook you can 
find where to put your picture of your cards. And then what happens is anybody who shares a picture by Monday night at 11 p.m. Central Standard Time, they'll get their name in for a drawing and I'll do the drawing on next Thursday night after the Queen Bee ink, paper, scissors, which you guys, I have a lot of them left. If anybody still needs to sign up for the Queen Bee ink, paper, scissors, please let me know. Um, we can get you card kits in the mail, no problem. All right, so what you need to do is go to, oh man, we need to go to my events. So in my cards, but and I know this is hard because I've got my little YouTube thing up here, but if you go to my events, in my Cards by Christine Facebook page, so let's go down here to events. Um, let's go to past events. Let's see if all events. So I'm going into my events because I've created an event and then I have to go to my past events because now we're done with this event. Oh man, here's past events. You guys, I saw, I just scrolled for it. February mystery card night with Cards by Christine. If you tap on the discussion, I just scheduled it to go live at seven and it's here right now. It says, we hope you had a great time solving the mystery with us tonight. Show off your beautiful creations. Like if you want to share more than one, you're welcome to. And be inspired by everyone's cards. Cards commented on this thread by Monday, February 27th at 11 p.m. Central will be entered in to win prizes. And nobody has shared a card yet. But all you would do is click on comment. And, oh, I don't know if I have bad pictures. No, I don't have bad pictures. But one moment, please. <laughs> Let me see if I can have, um, okay, the last thing I have here is my cat. Okay, so life is good. I, I was going to show you. All you do is click on write a comment, and you can add a picture. And Tigger is the last one that I took a picture of, so he's okay. Um, and so I'll show you some Tigger pictures. You guys would love them. So, and then you just hit, and then you could write a comment if you wanted, like, to share what you used. You're welcome to. Um, so I teased you a little bit with Tigger. So let's just show you guys. Um, there he is sitting on all of my, um, my book that I have my class sign up. He's like, mom, you're not doing any work right now. You are going to be, um, watching and looking at me, um, the recipe cards. And then here's Tigger again. Um, and Tigger again. And here's Tigger. So this is where the wood burning fireplace is, you guys. This is where I set up shop today to work. You can see I got my computer set up. And you can kind of see a little bit of snow through the window, but that was early on. And there's Tigger. I had to take these pictures to send them to Tyler so that he would um, see what's going on. All right. So in case you guys didn't catch that, hopefully it makes sense. Most of you have probably shared pictures at this point. The main thing is to find this announcement with Mystery Card Night. And let's just see if it refreshes and see if anybody posted anything. Usually within a few minutes, somebody's already got um, a picture uploaded, but all right. So <laughs> Deb Norman says, sweet Tigger. Yes, he is a little handball. He's adorable. All right. So Anik asks, how often do I do Mystery Card Night? So um, he is ruling the roost, Lynn Beasley. He absolutely is. So Anik, here you go. I'm going to show anybody that wonders how many were Mystery Card Night is. Um, it's once a month. It's always, if a normal month happens, it's usually the third Monday of the month. Again, you guys, we didn't have it Monday because of the snowstorm that we have right now, right? We swapped classes around so that my ladies didn't have to be out on the streets driving in horrible snow and weather. But if you're wondering where you can find Mystery Card Nights, go to my website. So I have a website. It's called cardsbychrisb.com. Or if you search Cards by Christine, and if you go to my events calendar, so in here you go to, uh, oops, not catalogs. You go to events. And so like next month, so we're in February. Here was mystery card making event online. If you go to March, I just said it might be the third Monday and oops, there it is. <laughs> not oops, but like, you know, that song, oops, she did it again. Okay. Mystery card making night. Now I don't generally post clue number one until one or two weeks before the class. So when you go to find the date here, it's going to tell you the date, but it's not going to have any of the clues. It has here TBD, which means to be determined. Uh, so I have everything set up and ready to go. And as soon as I have the design, I can add all that information. And once I have that information, that's when I create the Facebook event. So this is my Bible, I should say, of my class schedule is in my events calendar for anybody that's new to me. If you will not break anything by clicking in anything in here. So like if you look at here, celebration who rah rah is tomorrow. And then if you go to March 2nd, ink, paper, scissors, I always show a picture of uh, close-ups of the class. Um, 
So that's in my events calendar, you guys. The events calendar is published pretty much. Oh my gosh, look at March, you guys. Anytime you see a little gray square, that is a class <laughs> or something stamping related in my calendar. Um, April too. So you can see here, once you get to May, I don't have like the skeleton stuff put in. I have some ad hoc stuff, but I'm uh, not ad hoc, but like mystery card night is set for the rest of the year. So here, May is the 22nd. June is the 19th. July is the 17th. So you guys can go out in my calendar and already see um, every mystery card night for the rest of the year. And you could put placeholders on your calendar for it. So um, hi, Sharon Land. Um, you like the design this month. Since it's 2 a.m. at my place, I will decorate my front tomorrow. Sounds good, Christina. <coughs> All right. So I hope that helps answer a little bit because I knew I had some newbies that were watching me tonight. Um, you can find all my information. My, you know, if you guys drop down, you got all that information right here. Um, if you need help with anything, I'm I'm here to help you. So, um, I am not. I oh, Anika is asking Christina if she's in Europe too. Where? See, isn't this awesome, you guys? We have a great community that loves to connect with other people. And when you say where you're from in the video, like. You're from Vancouver, you're from Oregon, you're from wherever. It helps connect other people that are close to you so that you could maybe have a new crafting buddy, right? In person. <laughs> so, all right. I think I covered everything for Mystery Car Night. You guys indulged me early on um, and let me share with you um, a couple classes that I have uh, fresh off the, the, the books. Um, I do have a celebration board number seven full. Um, so tomorrow night after class, we're gonna do another drawing. And I think it's actually not seven, it's probably eight. I'll have to look back, but I'm thinking we might um, be on board number eight. And then we've already got a, a few squares for board the next board, so exciting stuff. Um, we talked about sharing a card, like share your recipe card with me. I hope you guys like that idea. As soon as I get the first one set, I'll be creating that. Um, so. You lost the chat for some reason. Okay, so how you get the chat back, Paula, is you go out of the video and you come back in and it lets you click on live chat again and you should be good to go. All right, you guys, this is awesome. We had a good class. Make sure to share this video with your friends and family too that are crafters. Um, you never know who it could inspire to get crafty. All right, you guys, what a great mystery card night. <laughs> Lots of love, sunshine, and hugs to you guys. Um, enjoy the weather. Um, don't get crazy in the weather. Make a snow angel if you want to, or make a card with an angel on it. Uh, you guys just stay safe wherever you are, um, whatever weather you have. <laughs> um, we'll be see you tomorrow night for sure at six for the Celebration Hoorah Rock class. Um, hi, Lori from Minnesota. So I need to watch the first step. Yep, we're just going to tune out, you guys, so that you can catch the replay now. All right, you guys, I'm going to count to five, and then I'll end it just in case it ends it early, which it sometimes does. So after the five, then I'll end it. So one, two, three, four, and five, you guys.